we spoke with two of the performers for the upcoming musical production of Dear Evan Hansen, showing this week at the Peace Center in Greenville. And can you tell us a little bit about your character for people who are not familiar with the book or the play or the movie? Yeah, um, Evan Evan Hansen is a 17-year-old kid, and uh, he's a very isolated teenager. He gets caught up in a lie that he never meant to tell, and uh, he gets caught up in something that's just much bigger than, than himself. But aside from that and the plot of the show, he's an isolated teenager who just always feels like he's on the outside of everything that's happening. How did you go about um, preparing for that character? What, where do you go to when you do you go? Do you reference personal feelings? Is it is it that simple, or is it is it the is it a challenge to to reference the those thoughts? No, it's a great question. I mean, it's 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 easy to access feelings like that because, I mean, I'm a human being, so I feel that sort of feeling every day of feeling like I'm on the outside of something, even though at my age and uh, you know a level of success that's happened in my life, I still feel like I'm missing out on a lot of things in life and missing out on a lot of connections and friendships, relationships, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But that's a very overwhelming thing to think about. So I have to really focus and center it towards something, um, whether it's something I talk about in therapy, something that happened in my childhood or some, some something that, um, I'll let I'll let you in on this. Like sometimes I think about my nephew who is um he's on the spectrum and I think about him growing up and like possibly <laughs> not having a hard time fitting in with people and like that helps me access some sort of um emotions that I need to reach. What would you like people to uh take away from your portrayal as this character? I didn't know other people felt this way. I if if like if people leave the theater and and feel that way that's like the best job in the world. It's um, cause I've had kids reach out to me that are like, I feel this exact way. And I had no idea someone else could feel this way. So thank you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Nikhil, do you want to talk about your character? Well, I play Connor Murphy and he's part of the Murphy family, uh, Cynthia, Larry, Zoe, uh, and Connor. Uh, and to him, the world, his family, everything around him is sort of pinned against him. And it's it's the it's the feeling that we all know of truly just feeling alone. Um and and um, you know, what do you do in the situations? How do you how do you become who are you in that feeling when you truly just feel alone, even to your closest people, even to people who are your blood, you know? Um who are you in that in, in that sense? Um, Connor Murphy, in feeling alone, commits suicide, um, and he commits suicide pretty early into Act One. Uh, and I sort of become throughout the rest of the show um, part of Evan, um, and I become this device for Evan, where I love playing this character in the sense that I get to kind of become the catalyst of what Evan is thinking and doing. And I kind of push him along the gang plank to make him jump for, for things, the next thing, do the next thing. Why don't you see it in this way, navigate this way. So like all these type of things, it's fun to kind of be his bumper guards, but also sometimes a voice that you need inside your head to encourage you to take action on your life, to, to do something about something, you know? So, um, and I, and, and I kind of become Connor in this way where it's a side of both Connor and Evan that they've always wanted to be, but they couldn't because, you know, so, um, which is, which is wonderful. And there are times within the show where I feel 30% Connor, 70% Evan, and that percentage keeps on fluctuating throughout the tactics that I want to do to push the story along. Sometimes I really want to be his friend. Sometimes I want to be his buddy. Sometimes I really want to stick it to him hard. Sometimes I want to be the voice in his head that is like a sledgehammer to him. It's just like, boom, that's the truth, you know? So it's kind of cool how my character becomes more of that. It is Connor, and be but it becomes this sort of uh, morph of the two characters. And I think that you learn that what I think was such a special thing about the show is that two people who are completely different, brought up in two completely different ways, are going through the exact same thing. 
what about um, the audience's reaction to some of the performances? How have those been? Are they varied? Varies night to night, which is a really wild thing. And it's a very exciting thing. It's very scary too. It's it's everything. It's it it it's a it's it's thrilling uh, to not know what you will get each night in certain instances from each audience from different cities. It's mm-hmm. it's been wildly exciting and scary, but thrilling. It's it makes it one of the best jobs be- in the world because it's like let's see what it is tonight uh, with with the audience because. I think the coolest thing about live theater versus TV or film or um, even sports events um, mm-hmm. is that everyone in that room is going on a journey together. And and I think what's so wonderful is that like, you know, the only constant that we have are the words, the music and everything like that. And also I think another constant that is sort of amorphous, but there is the trust that we have with our scene partner. So, so those are kind of the constants that we have and the variable that changes every night is truly the audience. Like I say that 25% of my show is the audience. And because like they're, they're such the last piece of the entire experience and it really does shape, it shapes our pace. It shapes everything. And what's actually so interesting is that a lot of people think that it's just Anthony and I doing a scene actually there's another scene partner it's called the audience and they are literally they are helping us conduct what we do like if if they're laughing extra long at me signing the cast and turning away like i'm gonna wait until the uh, applause just gets over the crest but i need to fill that time as an actor in the moment and so that's what makes it so like oh it's so dynamic and just to kind of go off of off of anthony it's like it it keeps it um like that's the magic that's the sparkle of theater right there and it's a lot because of the audience and a lot and and the differing audiences like and that's that's the like i mean i'm repeating a little bit with anthony but that's the thrill right there it's so wonderful yeah what have you guys learned as i guess actors or as people as humans from from working in these roles what is it what is the what have the roles characters taught you Mm, um it has taught me to ask people how they're doing and actually ask them how they're doing. And it has allowed me to understand the importance of um, actual communication and conversation um, in the flesh, in person, over the phone. But like that, that within itself, because even if you know the person, if you see them every day to day, or if you don't see them, I mean, often, but that act of asking actually someone how they are doing um, has has been a big part. I think I remember in rehearsals, I went back through some texts and through some conversations of like, I need, I, I need, I want to ask this person how they are. I want to check in on this person because I know that I felt in one part was like, oh my God, I don't have anybody that checks in on me. And that within itself was like, mm, I can change that. This this rehearsal process, this role has allowed me to 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 actively let people know that they are not alone um, in anything. So I think that has been one big thing that, that ha- this role has, and this show honestly has sort of like infused itself in my everyday life. Yeah, no, it sounds like as an audience member, you might take away the exact same thing. I mean, just listening yeah. to you now, I'm thinking, yeah, I need to call a couple of people after I get off work tonight. And see how yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great advice for all of us, for sure. Um, thank you, guys. I really appreciate you taking time. Is there anything else you want to add? It um, Don't let the reputation of the movie taint your um, expectations of the show. <laughs>